Okay, um, in this video we're going to continue um, looking at uh, some of the features of the C, C++ language. A bit of a review, of a review hopefully, um, although again I'm not necessarily assuming that you've programmed in C, C++ before, but whatever language you did take like an intro to programming course on, um, these are some of the, the kinds of things that you should have learned how to do in, in some sort of programming language. So in particular, um, I wanted to look at, um, this is going to be important for our class because our class is about um, um, data structures and, and creating and defining our own data structures. So that is kind of um, similar to the concept of adding a new data type to the language, okay? So C and C++ are typed languages. So all variables um, and, and, and data that you want to work with, you have to specify the data type of the variable before you can use it and before you can compile it. Um, so there, there are ways to add new types to the language, which we're going to be making use of, which is mostly in C++, creating new classes and structures to, to define a data type or a data structure to add it to the language, okay? Uh, but I'm going to show, um, uh, talk a little bit about um, some uh, simpler mechanisms that add that, that are kind of like adding in a new type. And this is a little bit of, of a random uh, catch-all uh, um, uh, lecture because I'll talk about some other things. I want to talk a little bit about the string type as well um, in the C++ language. Okay, so let's first look at um, um, at uh, type defs. Okay, I'm, I'm looking at, uh, at our user-defined data types um, example video here. So um, type defs. Let's go down to main. Um, type defs allow us to add a new data type or a new type specifier to the uh, language. So they were available all the way back in C um, and they're still available in C++. They could be useful. So the most, most basic uh, use, so I mean one thing to note or to know is that a type def is really not adding a new type to the language. It, it's, it's, you can think of it as just an alias or another name for an existing type, okay? So there, there's kind of two real common examples where you'll see people use type defs. Um, so the first is, is uh, you know, lots of times, so you may or may not know it about the C language and the C++ language, but you can specify more, in more complex ways, more detailed ways, the, the, the type of the data that you want. So, so there are, there are access mod access uh, or, or modifiers for the data types that you can add to. So, you, so lots of different data types you can specify to be unsigned. So that means that I want an integer, but um, it, it won't hold negative integers, only positive integers, okay? So by, by not having one bit to indicate whether that it's a negative or a, or a positive, that allows me, for example, to extend the range of my integer, right? So, so I can make um, my range like twice as big that I, that I can uh, before, so. Um, and then lots of types, you can specify that I want a long version of types. So that just, uh, so instead of using normally like uh, four bytes for my integer, which would only give a specific range, um, a, a long might use twice as many bytes, like eight byte integers. So that would give a possible much bigger range of, of integer values that I can represent, okay? So anyway, uh, in, in lots of, of programming, um, especially like more lower level, system level programming, you need to be very specific about kind of the, 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 the data type that you need to use. So you'll see that, but you know, so it can be annoying um, to have to type in unsigned long int for lots of variable names. So you might just type def that. So, so here, this is kind of the actual type, the support by language and ul int is just a, an alias, okay? Um, and so once you've defined that, you can define variables of ul int. So that, that becomes the, the name of the type. And, and you know, I, I could have functions then where I could pass in ul int. So normally you do type defs in the global um, namespace instead of inside of a local namespace like I did here. So I normally would put like my type def uh, at the top of my file in, in the global space, right? But um, that right so and that's good and so uh, I, I was just finishing up saying so once you do a type def like that I, I could define functions that take a ul int as input or that return a ul int as the result that kind of thing all right 
Um, and if you run this, um, let's go ahead and run the debugger here. Um, oh, I forgot. I need to um, update. Um, just say, let me pause. I need to update it so it'll run my um, my file that we're. Okay, there. So I started up the debugger um, with this file that we're compiling and, and trying to run here. So, um, so yeah, I mean, you know, th these work fine to um, define variables of ul int, and, you know, now you've got the variables and you can print them out as usual and, and whatever, okay? Um, so another common um, way to do this, so th this might be more uh, instead of like low-level programming, so, so more like, uh, you know, if you're building, uh, you know, making records um, for uh, an application for a database or something like that. Um, so, so often, like, like you have to use a fundamental type, but, but it's, it's really specific. Like a, a very good example is like a, an, an ID, like a social security number or something like that. So an int might be a, a pretty good representation of that, but int isn't very meaningful name. I mean, int is just can generically hold any kind of a, a whole number uh, integer type, right? So to make the code more readable, you might do a type def, um, um, if, if if I'm really passing around things that are meant to represent student IDs or campus-wide IDs, okay? So um, there, there's a new way of doing type defs in C++, so you might also see this, so it's the using, so here we use, uh, and then we give the alias on the left-hand side of an equals, and then the, the uh, existing type on the right-hand side. So these are mostly equivalent, but there are reasons why in C++ you'd want to use using instead of a type def, okay? But that does the same thing, and, and, and that, again, that adds an alias to the language. So now um, I can create variables of type CWID. And again, the, 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 the example here is that, you know, you should strive to write um, meaningful code and, and code that communicates your intention well, uh, readable code, right? So this, is, this gives a much better indication of what the use of the variable student ID is than declaring it just as a regular integer, okay? So, so there's some hit that this holds uh, uh, whatever CWID is. So, so maybe this isn't a great name, but um, but um, you know again, you know if you're familiar with that, it holds a, a campus-wide ID, so that, you know some sort of an I identifier for our university or whatever. So, all right. So we might we might use type defs or these usings um, at times. Okay. So the other um, example of adding a new data type to the language are enumerated types that I wanted to talk about briefly, okay? So if you add an enumerated type, um, you are really kind of defining a new data type, all right? So enumerated types um, solve this particular problem, okay? So there's lots of times where we want to add a new data type to the language where we have just a group of, um, of um, uh, usually a finite number of values that some variable can take on, okay? So so days of the week, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday is a good one, or months of the year, January, February, March, things like that, right? Um, you can think of others, right? So in, in original C, there was no kind of enumerated type. Um, so normally what you have to do is, in, in fact, you uh, there wasn't even like this idea of a constant. So uh, in original C, you would actually use a C macro, like a, a pound uh, define, um, and you would have to uh, arbitrarily assign like an integer value to each one of the enumerated types that you want to use. There's a lot of problems with this. Um, so, so in, in C++, instead of using pound defines, we would probably define this as a global constant, right? So one reason why we normally uh, identify global constants differently using all uppercase letters is we have namespace problems. So if I want to include a library that um, defines like um, some other enumerated type or for some other reason needs to have like a Sunday defined, um, uh, we, we can easily have conflicts, okay? Um, so, so these can be problematic, right? But but uh, but but that's that's how we would have done it before we had enumerated type. So in C++, there's this enumerated type, and if you're writing C++ code, you should use enumerated type whenever you're trying to create a variable that can take on a finite set of values, like a day of the week or um, a month of the year or um, things like that. Okay, there, there's lots of, of, of places where we need 
um, things like that. So like, a, I don't know, like, like an employee type or, or a student type, freshman, sophomore, junior, senior, right? So, so we need these a lot in programming, okay? So the, the most recent version of C++, like version 11 and version 20, um, the, the, the best practice is to use what's known as a enumerated class, um, so a num class type. So, so to do this, you just say num class, um, have open and closing curly braces, don't forget the semicolon at the end, okay? So this ends, when we're adding new types of language, we always have open and, colon, open and closing curly braces and then a semicolon after closing one, so we'll see this when we add classes and structures uh, later on as well. And then you just list the different names of, of your enumerated types that you want to give. So these are kind of like symbolic names for your enumerated types that we're a adding to the language here, separated by commas. So. And here, Day of the Week um, actually adds like a new namespace, and I'll talk a little bit more about those in just a second here. So when I actually add these, if I want to actually use like Sunday, Monday, and Tuesday, uh, the, you actually have to use the full name. So the full name is like day of the week, colon, colon, Sunday, where the day of the week is kind of like a namespace um, in C++, all right? So, um, and I'll talk about this in a second as well. So uh, some enumerated types, it's nice to be able to iterate over them. So, so some enumerated types, there's a explicit order. So like if I was writing an application to play a, a game of cards, um, I might have a particular order of the, of the suits and of the um, ranks of, of the cards. Like, um, like my ranks of my cards might be two is the lowest value. So two, three, four, five, and then up to the face cards, like 10, and then jack, queen, king, and then ace is the highest value, all right? And then I might have certain things where I have to enumerate we have to iterate over the values, like to uh, create a deck of cards with all the ranks. Uh, so anyway, um, so I, I, I'll, I'll show using the iterate. So, so not all enumerated types, you, you have to enumerate over them, but sometimes you have to iterate over them, I should say. But, but sometimes uh, there is a, a, a natural order to the values of your enumerated type, and you want to iterate over those values in the order from the lowest to the highest. Okay? Um, So this actually adds, though, a new data type called day of the week um, to my language. So um, we can go back down to our main function um, and show some examples of that. So now that we de declare the enumerated day of the week type, um, I can just create a simple variable of type day of the week. Okay. So notice by convention in our class, data types that you add to the language should always start with an initial capital letter D. Okay. So some people maybe think of this as bad practice. So, so I have a, a variable with exactly the, the same name, except um, it differs only in case. Okay, but I do use that a lot in our class here. So 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 a capital D represents for the very first letter of, of a name represents a data type. Okay, so we'll use this whenever we add classes and, and other data types to the language. And here we added a day of the week data type to the language. Uh, and I created a variable day of the week um, with the same name, but a lowercase d represent means that this is just a regular variable, okay? Um, and so since this is a regular variable, I can assign it a value of my enumerated type. So I can assign it the value Monday of this day of the week, all right? Now, if you try and just um, out, output the day of the week, uh, you'll get an error. So, so if I try and do something like that variable. <coughs> um, so this won't compile because uh, the, there's, you know, unlike integers um, and floats and things like that, built you know fundamental data types, uh, the C output stream doesn't know how to output a day of the week class. So you can see already that the IntelliSense is, is flagging that. Um, and if you compile, you know, we'll get the problem that, that the, the output string operator doesn't know how to output a day of the week, all right? Um, so that's why we created a, kind of a helper function for this day of the week enumerated type. Um, so here, again, this is also meant to illustrate, you know, the day of the week is a new data type we add to the language, so you can actually also add that as 
uh, a value as an input, you know, the type of an input parameter for a function. Okay? So this function takes one of these day of the weeks um, and it converts it into a string type. I'm going to talk a little bit about strings here in a second as well. Okay. So, but you know, you can probably see what it does. You know, basically, the, the, the normal way that you use enumerated type, if you don't have to iterate over it, is with a switch statement. You know, so for each particular value that 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 your enumerated type can take on, I need to do something different with it. So in this case, you know, for each day of the week, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, I need to convert it to the corresponding string and, and return that string. Okay. Because you know we need this little conversion function, because um, um, uh, the output out the output stream operator knows how to output strings, right? So if I convert it first to a string, then I can output this, um, and we'll get some meaningful output if we run the 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 code here. So, oops. So we'll start the debugger, continue down on my breakpoint, um, and then if we step over this, um, we should see that, yeah, I mean, it actually called that function converted to a string, which could be output on our output stream. And so now we see that our variable is, indeed has the value Monday, right? Um, you know, and, and you can try yourself. You can change that to a different variable and, and, com and convince yourself that the convert day of the week to string is working. So. Um, and here's an example of that iterator that I was talking about here. So, um, um, again, I, I don't exactly like this, but this is what I currently do if I need to have an enumerated type that I need to, that there's a particular ordering to the values, and I want to be able to enumerate over those. Okay, so this is a little bit bad because it's a bit of a dupe, of a repetition. So, so I, I, I declare the, the particular values of the day of the week, but then I have another structure where I put these in. But basically, again, this is another example. I, I create, um, instead of a, a single value of type day of the week, I create an array of that holds the, the, the day of the week. And then this, this just initializes the array to, to hold the values, to hold the seven values, Sunday, Monday, Tuesday. Okay, So this is going to be an index zero of my array that I called the day of the week iterator and this is going to be at index one, index two, and so on. Okay. Um, so by having that um, we can use uh, regular um, or, or newer C++ what are known as iterators um, um, or, or um, value iterators here, right? So basically this is just the syntax. So, so this will, this for loop will go through this array um, starting at the value at index zero and, and it returns. So, so each time in the loop, the first time it, it returns the value at index zero of my day of the week iterator, which was Sunday, right? Um, and then Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, and so on and so on. So um, I'm going to set a breakpoint after this so I can just continue and show the whole result of, of iterating over the day of the week enumerated type here. So continue on. Um, right. So that's just showing that, that it went through the loop um, and it, it iterated using that array basically. Sunday, Monday, Tuesday, Wednesday, Thursday, Friday, Saturday. All right. Um, all right. So that's the enumerated type. Um, just a, a word or two about namespaces. Um, so that day of the week, like I showed you, is kind of like a namespace, although unfortunately it's not exactly like a namespace. So in current C++11, which is what we're using right now for this class. Um, I mean, it would be nice if we could, um, um, uh, or maybe before I talk about this, let me talk about what namespaces are. So namespaces um, allow us to uh, fix that problem of, com of, of polluting the global namespace. So if, if you used a bunch of other libraries uh, and they needed to define, to define things that were like global constants, there's always a, a problem that two different libraries might have defined the, the same name for the same constant. So like a common one is like two different sorts of math libraries having their own version of like a pi constant or something like that, okay? So, you know, most modern languages kind of explicitly have namespaces so whenever you're defining like a new library or a new module each one is its own namespace 
C++, which derived from C, originally C didn't really have that concept. C++ has added that concept by adding namespaces, okay? So the most visible thing for code in our class is that we do use some libraries that define their stuff inside of namespaces. So in particular, um, a lot of the standard C++ libraries are in a namespace called std for, for standard, okay? But um, most of the code that I give you in our class, uh, if, you, if you look at the top of our files, there's going to there's gonna often be a using namespace std. So that means that um, uh, by default, if it can't figure out uh, where something is located, it'll check if it's in the, the, the std, the standard namespace, right? So that means is, is that um, um, if you don't have this using namespace uh, std, so if I comment that, comment that out um, and recompile here, um, if we go back down to um, um, this, so if I try and just, so, so C out is defined in the standard namespace, but without the using namespace std, um, if we try and compile, um, um, here, so we, have, we have some other problems, so string is also defined in the standard namespace, but, but the one that I, in particular that I was talking about, um, C out and indel, um, are all in the standard namespace. So um, um, you can just um, uh, uh, always, if something is in a namespace, you can specify the namespace that it's in, um, and, and that would allow this particular line to compile. And so I'd have to do that for all of, all of my uses of C out and, and the, the indel, the, the, the new line inter um, um, indicator, uh, and things like that, right? Um, or we could just put the using namespace std in there, right? So, so even though these are all in the, the standard namespace, um, I can refer to them without the namespace specifier um, with this using. All right, so hopefully now everything should compile. Um, all right, so that's just a warning there. So. Um, All right. Unfortunately, although, I mean, really that day of the week when we use the class enumeration is a namespace, uh, but it's not, it's a slightly different type of namespace, and, and I hate that there's exceptions like this. So the new C++ 2.0 standard um, uh, actually fixes this. Um, but so, again, I mean, what I'm trying to get at is uh, it would be nice, and a lot of people are tempted to, you know, to, to, have, to avoid having to, to, to type out, you know, the day of the week, colon, colon, um, if we're using that enumerate type a lot, is to, to do a using namespace day of the week, uh, but that doesn't quite work yet. It will work in, two, actually, it'll work in C++ 2.0, but they call that um, uh, using enum instead of using namespace, okay? So it's like an enumerated namespace. So. Um, anyway, so it's not, not C plus, it's not 2.0, it's C plus plus 20 for the, the version that just came out in 2020. So. Um, all right, and then the final thing that I want to talk about is the string um, data type. Okay, so originally in the C language, there wasn't kind of a, um, a full-featured string, a data type for uh, manipulating um, uh, you know, textual information, right? So in, in C, in plain C, you have to use arrays of characters. So you're actually using an array of the basic character data type when you're doing old style, what's known as old style C strings or old style C arrays, C string arrays, okay? Uh, but you should not be using arrays of characters to represent textual information if you're programming in actual C++, and, and we don't use that. So instead we use the string data type. So the string data type um, is a data type that was added to the language. To, to, to use strings, you have to include the string library. So you have to do a pound include um, um, to use strings, okay? So strings, um, uh, it, it's, it's a little bit, it, it's not exactly the same as like a fundamental data type, like a, 
uh, like a care or an int. Um, so, so it's a it's a, more, it's a complex data type, um, but you can use it mostly like like a built-in data type. Um, so um, so for example, so, so we can create declare things of type strings, and we can initialize them with string constants. So the same style, the same type of string constant that we've always used, um, where we include the, the string constant in double quotes, right? So here's two variables. Let me go ahead and let's make certain that we're compiling here. Um, and let me set a breakpoint, or, or let me um, just clear off if I have any existing breakpoints. And let's just set a breakpoint right here. Um, so we, we can declare strings, uh, you know, variables of type string um, and assign constant to them. Like we could assign, you know, a constant value of five to an integer variable. Um, and, uh, and, and, you know, as you've already seen, strings are, uh, you know, the output stream operator knows how to handle um, a string to output, you know, so it'll output these, right? Um, string has some nice features. It overloads the plus operator, so um, um, so constant values in C++ um, are going to be compiled into string data types so that you can actually use plus to concatenate um, strings, right? So I can create a new string S, which is a concatenation of some constant strings and my string variables, right? So I get my name, you know, so I get actually, hello, my, so the, the thing that printed out there, S holds the whole string. Hello, my name is Derek John Hogger there, right? Um, you can treat strings um, as arrays, um, although the next video will talk more about arrays and if you haven't run into using arrays in C++ yet. So for example, you know, each individual character is indexed starting at zero in this array, so I can change the first character to a J by assigning it. Uh, notice the single quotes here. So, so if, if you want to access the individual characters, you have to assign character literals or something that's a character into the individual characters of my string S here. Okay. So now we've got uh, Jello. My name is Derek John Hodder. After I do that, um, I don't know why I have these semicolons here. Um, um, the the string is is actually a, a, an object. Um, so you can actually call what are known as member methods um, on um, strings, um, and you know I encourage you to. Uh, I'll add the, um, the the string library here um, um, to our video here. Um, but um, uh, actually, let, let me get that. So, simple plus reference. Let's say the the string library here. So. Um, on, again, you know, normally when I search Google for something like that, c++.com comes up for that. So, so here is uh, the list of the member methods that you can do with the string. So the ones you might mostly be interested in are um, like getting the size. Uh, we already look at the operator, the, the indexing operator. So this allows you to get characters and to actually change characters uh, in the string by treating it like an array. Um, um, and you can actually do things like find and, re and replace and things like that, which I, I don't think I'm going to show in this video here. But, um, oops. But, um, um, anyway, so yeah, there, there's, you know, getting the length of the string. Uh, I, I do show some others like uh, inserting. So, um, um, so if, 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 if you call find, here's an example calling find, that will return the position, like the index, where um, the, the start of, of, of Derek is in, in the string here. And so by inserting at that position, uh, banana, banana, nana, bow, it's going gonna, it's gonna to put banana, nana, bow in front of, of Derek here, right? So now if we look at the output of that, um, why didn't we see the output? Some, sometimes the, the output gets buffered here, so you might not always see the output. There it is. So, so there, it inserted that in front of, of, of Derek, which we got the position of that by calling find before that. Um, all right, and there's substring. So, um, so 
So anyway, so that was kind of it for this video. Um, that was everything we wanted to cover. Hopefully that was useful. Uh, we'll be using strings a lot. Um, we will be adding new types to the language. Maybe, maybe uh, we, we'll probably run, again, run across type deaths and enumerated types again. But um, all right, so that's it for this video. Um, and a few tutorials uh, further if you're interested. And also that, that reference for like the string library and the others that has reference documentation for the other libraries like that there. Um, okay, that's it, and I'll see you.